Before we get into the episode, I want to mention another sponsor for this episode. In-game content is a great podcast. I was told specifically to say that it's a show about four idiots that talk about things they think and know about. Am I being punked? This sounds like us. Oh, uh, wait, no, no, no. There, there are more notes here. In-game content alternates between their weekly topical conversation, followed by an episode of their D&D campaign the next week, with episodes releasing on Saturdays. Topical conversation revolves around video games and TTRPGs like Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, and even one of my old favorites, Yu-Gi-Oh! Their D&D campaign is a sea-based campaign that features a ragtag group of people that work under a captain and will be given his ship to do whatever they want once he retires. They recommend starting with good old episode 1 titled Dungeons and Doofuses, One Piece the Campaign. You can find links to their recommended episode, as well as their Twitch link, in our show notes. And you can find the podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Go check out in-game content today. And now, on to the show. Last time on Lawful Stupid. Ms. B, you're here with Marguerite and Lafayette and a still-dead Lucian. How do I make him undead? It's important that we bring him back to life, not to make him undead. Just so we're on the same page. We can fix it. It will require diamond. I just want to find a married couple and fucking take the ring off a lady's finger. You know, I'm, I'm not above just, like, stealing the diamond to save Lucian. Gordy has this teleport magic. He can do it over uh, extremely long distances. Kind of wipes some sweat away and he says, Okay, it's ready. They're ready. William and Abon have... have uh, William and Abon. And William and B have bought <laughs> their goods and they are ready to go on this adventure uh, through the portal and save their friend, Lucian. But first... Let's talk about what you guys bought during the, the time that so we don't have to talk about it. You know, look for it on the list. But what would you guys buy from the stores there in town? Well, the only store I really found was this dude, and he had like this boat. You're dead. This <laughs> is boat, and he was like, <laughs> I mm. said, oh. passage down the river six, and he's like, two coins. And I was like, I literally have no coins on me. And he was like, he get fucked, back. nerd. <laughs> so just, oh, so no, since then, so I've just been kicking enough. it with keynotes. Okay. I'm <laughs> not allowed to pass on. No, uh, no, we uh, we stressed out the uh, shopkeep for sure, most definitely, because that's lawful stupid tradition. But uh, Miss B in the end bought the gold and compass, um, which is a cool looking broken compass for, made by Zebra, and the ring of Kaant, I think made by Vanillin, as well as just a normal pocket watch to keep track of time. And do you want to uh, briefly talk about what those do real quick? Do I want to? No, but I will because they're cool. Okay. <laughs> you had. Oh, no, uh, you got it. Yeah. So the uh, the compass it points the most valuable item within three hundred feet. Uh, ignores items in extra dimensional spaces, such as the bag of holding. The ring of Kaant is like a yin yang pattern ring with opal and onyx set in it, and it allows once a day the wielder to ask a question. Um, the qu- if. The question, if it's able to be answered with a one-minute vision, with an obscure answer to the question, uh, the, for the ring to succeed, for showing the vision, one must appease the ring with a philosophy on why it should answer the question. Yeah, so basically what I, I imagine this ring has its own like semi-sentient understanding. You have to try to convince, and we all know it's me, and I'm very easy to convince. And so you ask a question, I give you an obscure answer via vision. Oh, yeah. I have pretty to cool. tell Devin it's because I want it. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Here it is. Uh, <laughs> Dwayne. What did you what did what did William get? William purchased the Tinkering Turtle, which is an ornate brass and silver ball. Uh, I would prefer not to say what it does, because I want it to be a surprise mm, when okay. I unleash it. Okay. I dig that. And it came from uh oh, I guess technically it's called a holding sphere of uh Wibbers! Uh, but I bought it at the Tinkering tor- Turtle. I apologize. Okay, so it, okay, the Holding Sphere whips. Whippies. Uh, I know there's a there's an they missed a, one of the marks over the Whippies. letters. So. Oh, I understood what you meant, patron. 
it, it's okay. a fancy fairy tale story town. Of course, there has to be like yeah, little yeah. marks in there. Cool. All right, so we bought our, our stuff, and you are about to step through the teleportation device that Gordy has set up. This magic spell. You have twenty four hours uh, upon stepping through, and your mission is to get a diamond. You're, tra- you're attempting to steal that uh, from the Haven family. Um, and that's what you know. I stepped through the portal, dog. Yeah. <sighs> oh, wait. Before right. I step through the portal. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Miss B, it's important that we get ground rules out of the way. Mm-hmm. We're here for a diamond. Mm-hmm. And I don't really give a fuck about anybody on the other end. So... Yeah. There, yeah, I may leave bodies. Is that a problem for you? Not at all. Great. No, and I did not like the havens. Steps to the portal. Yep. <laughs> Is that a problem Eagerly. for you? Nope. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't listen to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> She's like telling her story and you hear... Fuck! <laughs> it's God. Uh, w- William? <laughs> William? <laughs> <laughs> On the other end, I'm just fucking ripping people up already. Yep. Bro, um, that, that was the wait staff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, how may I help you? <laughs> you teleport through and you are in a location close to the coast. Yeah, it's it's almost like hidden in the rocks, which seems appropriate, right? You don't want people coming back through this that aren't supposed to. Uh, sort of in mm-hmm. the rocks off this coast and you're able to make your there's a trail that leads down to that make the way um, through this kind of rocky trail up the cliff face and onto the top of this large grassy field rolling hills ahead of you but you can see within about four miles ahead of you is this floating kingdom Okay, it's like ripped out of the ground. It's like it, it, someone plucked it straight up. It's still got, you know, where it's like diamond pointed down or somebody it looks like it's been pulled up for whatever reason. But you can mm. also see from here chains, four chains, uh, kind of on the cardinal directions that are, are you can't see where they connect into the ground. Um, but you can tell that these are, even from this distance, insanely massive chains that are linked into this earth. Um on this floating island, essentially. And I assume you begin to walk. Uh, is there a fast way up there, or do we have to climb those chains? Yeah, Devin. Is there, uh, like, a taxi service? Or, um, I don't know. Roll a history check service? for me. Oh my god. History check? Yeah, you could both do it. You could both do it. Here, oh, here's what here's what you both know. Okay, this is good. Here's what you both know. You know Zalance. Um, it was around 600 years ago, before, you know, when you were, wh- whatever happened before, you, it was around. However. Isn't that where I come from? Yes. It, so, and that, and that'd be, oh, it, was not, right. it was not floating last time you were here. It was on the ground, like every other town and city you've been to. I, I did not realize this was my hometown. Could yes, I had forgotten as well. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> I'll roll a history check, and does, it's two, another fucking two on my history check. So cool. That's a five here. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it. You guys knew it was. It, why is it floating? <laughs> why is it floating? No, okay, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You're giving us that, but so we don't know. All right, fuck it. Um, yeah, that's not supposed to be floating. I guess up the. I guess we approach and see if what to find. Otherwise, we're climbing those giant chains. That will Damn take it. all day. <laughs> well, can you fly? Well, I wish I could sprout wings. That'd be great. Can yeah. your magic do it? No. Uh, I'm gonna look around. Is there like an elevator hmm. service or what? 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 Yeah, what so can I find here? What I'll give you is that this is sort of in the epicenter. Um, there is like a sprawling town and villages that have been built there's a crater you know underneath this land where it was pulled from but around that the the top of that all around uh, underneath is homelands and other businesses and towns 
um, that exists. You would have to make your way through town. Make my way down. I'm trying to avoid it every time I get there. <laughs> you have to make your way through town in order to even make it to the chains wherever they are plugged into the earth. All right, I head to town. Yep. I'm going to put my hood up so people think I'm strangers. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't... Yeah. But I'll give William the warning. Make your way through town. Yes. Uh, you are able to bob and weave, and the town looks like it's pretty pretty kept up. Uh, the guards here seem to be... There's a plethora. They're on every corner. They're marching around everywhere, just making sure the streets are clean. You see them correcting people. Often for walk, walking, jaywalking, essentially. Um, there are some motorized vehicles um, that are driving through the streets here. However, barbaric they might be in their in their initial states, and you see that they have that Ginger Trees uh, logo, which <laughs> I'm not sure what that is yet. Well, that's Gins, but they they all have this logo uh, on them. It's a purple mushroom. Purple mushroom. <laughs> It's canon now, oh gosh. Uh, purple, I just drew a purple mushroom. <laughs> but it's, it has like me. gears on it, so it looks like a... Uh... It's a geary, it's a geary mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a, yeah. It's because it... Uh, it can be electrical wiring. <laughs> the products will mm-hmm. take you out of this world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you want to stop at any stores that I haven't built already or... <laughs> No, we we have to save our boy Lucian. We fucked hey, around at the bar. Are there any di- are there any jewelry <laughs> stores? Uh, the diamond in this store, town? the ruby store, the opal <laughs> yeah. store, the sapphire yeah, yeah. store. Uh, the diamond store is recently hit up one of these fucking stores. The diamond store is closed for business. They went out of they're out of stock until forever. I break in. Is there anything in there? Shelves, empty shelves, <laughs> and a homeless Great. man who who craps on the floor in the <laughs> same spot every day. <laughs> Gross. All right. No, I want to continue. Get out of here, kids! This is this is my store. Um, I want to find transportation to the the top area. I want to go to the up. Okay, and you guys make your way through the town to the base mm-hmm. of one of these chains. What you see is there's like looks like a small mountain esque um, figure at the base of the chain. You see the chain connects to. A device that can be cranked. Uh, <laughs> gosh dang it. The crank is so <laughs> large that you would need a team of people <laughs> to make it work. How many uh, how many hands do you say need to be cranking simultaneously? <laughs> <laughs> what? How many hands do you need to be cranking <laughs> away the to make crank. it? You have, you've ever seen it. I don't even think that you you can reach the crank from where you are. I think you now. What time of year is it? Is this Christmas with the crank? No. Uh, I think you'd have to be standing on like two people's shoulders to reach this crank. Oh, that's how wow. huge that's, it is. That, that crank's oh, real yeah. up there. Yeah, super it takes tall. Takes three three people. That's six hands with this crank. Ah oh, man. <laughs> It's not so much that I'm, I hate it because I'm saying it. I hate it because I know I'm going to have to deal with everything. Uh, but that was a good. Uh, huge crank. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Well, it's huge crank. It's a soundboard for you now. It's you started and you were like fumbling and I was like, what the fuck? Because I knew where I was going. Said, I couldn't and stop. And then it hit. It's like you're sliding on the ice. He's, he's and written you- this bombshell for himself in his own script. <laughs> He's written this out and he's like, oh yeah, when I read that later, it's gonna suck, he says as he wrote it. Don't down. say crank, don't say crank, don't say crank. <laughs> Large crank. Crank. <laughs> the biggest crank you ever see. Alright, so we approach this mountainous crank. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I was dead. <laughs> there. <laughs> well, to me. And there is a group of four soldiers who are in front of this device. Um kind of just post it up. Uh, a couple have swords. Hair and well met, my dudes. Hello? I need to get up to uh, mainland pronto. Okay, do you have your passport? Uh, checks my bags. Do I have my passport for town? Uh, you know what? You know what? Let's play D&D. Um, don't you have something that gives you access to like uh like higher level <sighs> P- 
people um, or die so it, it what it does is it i got i have the i know about the inner workings of like courts and stuff like that because i'm okay. a courtier <clears throat> um what does it read exactly hold on uh, I'll get a feature and traits. Uh, let's see. Boy, howdy. Uh, you would have thought it would be under features and traits. Uh, it sure isn't. And I probably should know as a good DM, but I'm not a good DM, so I don't know why I don't know it. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm a DM, and I don't fucking... Oh, here it is. It's under description, mm. where background is. I was so fucking muted just screaming, it's under description. <laughs> Uh, your knowledge of how bureaucracies function lets you gain access to the records and inner workings of any noble court or government you encounter. You know who the movers and shakers are, whom to go to, the favors you seek, and what the current intrigues of interest in the groups are. Okay, let's do this. I think William's a pretty smart guy. Can you do... Um, actually, no, what? not yet. So what do you... So you say, hell on Matt, and they say, see your papers. How do you respond? Yeah. So uh, do I have papers? Um, like, from when I originally lived there? So wouldn't I have papers that are 600 years old? Yeah, I would think... Yeah, so... Or did they not require they, papers? They, they would not have required old? paper at, at okay, that time. Okay, so then I don't have them if they didn't require them to go in and out. Um, so he asked for my passport, and I look at him and I say, uh, I... Right. The Zalans I know and love doesn't require passports for its citizens to return home. And he looks at your clothing, which is, uh, I assume, in, in the highest order right now. Uh, yeah, fucking fine. Remember, I, I teed myself out uh, mm-hmm. and Lucian on our way out of Prim. He says, um, I'm, I'm sorry, sir and madam, but to get to the uppers, you will need um, the proper paperwork to... Yeah, just not anyone can access. Are you from out of town? Uh, no, I I grew up in uh, Zeland, and I, I went to about the world to do business of the highest accord with kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers and chiefs and and and, and all the like. So it's it's a surprise to me that my own home has become so militant like the Taggarts. That you're checking me at the door. Well, with the influx, especially of, you know, Tagershan spies, we can't just let anyone in. And, and not just anyone gets to the uppers. I mean, people live you're either lower or an upper. And if you're an upper, you have papers. So William takes a step forward, straightens his tie, and says... If you know what's good for you, you're going to let me and my friend up without a fuss. I sure would hate to to have to take this up the chain. Go over your head, as it were. I'm sure your boss's boss's boss would not be happy about this. And I would like to... uh, I would like to intimidate Yeah, I would say roll for intimidation. And I would like to do that with advantage by basically making the air around them really, really hot uh, and hurting myself to do so. It's like one of my mm-hmm. things. I can roll intimidation with advantage. Hey, real quick. Hmm. Uh, Dwayne said, I don't want to have to take this up the chain in the big chain floating city. Uh, <laughs> and that is the funny thing I've heard my entire life. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time on air that I have seen Shane. I have heard him twice so far. I'm, okay, so I showed that up earlier. Is, so dead to me. I got an eighteen, sir. Um, so the guard who kind of stepped up and was kind of in charge, um, kind of puffs his chest and 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 looks around, and like the other dudes are like shaking their heads, like like shrugging their shoulders. I don't know, I don't know. Um, so you see him. He says, "Wait here a moment." And I would know who the general is. You so that's the thing is he would not be here now. being the time frame it is it wouldn't be the same guy. Um, here's what I will let you do though. Right, but my mm, can okay. you? But oh, I guess I didn't do any work. Fuck that sure fucks up my background, doesn't it? By having a 600 year gap. Well, what I was gonna let you do is because you guys came through town. 
there's stuff up everywhere. If you want to roll an investigation check for me, I'll let you have, like, seen... You would have been pretty perceptive, perhaps, or even perception check to see some of the things. Yeah, I would prefer perception. Yes. <laughs> my, my stats. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll roll perception. Uh, that is a, a dirty 20. Okay, yeah, so he, here's some things I'll give you based off just, like, uh, signs that are up or storefronts, um, all that kind of stuff. So you know that the... Um, the Upper Museum, uh, there are a couple pieces of information. Couple, upper Museum um, will um, be hosting the Haven Diamond, a Haven Family Diamond, uh, on this day. Um, and we'll say that right now you are in the afternoon. It's going to be in about an hour. It's going to be making its way from the Lower Museum to the Upper Museum. It's like a big thing. People are going to be gathering for it soon. Uh, two, you know that King Shori, uh, he's the king of Zalance, will be present or is expected to be present in attendance. It's kind of like his his thing. Um, and all of the... Uh, I guess what would we call it? Make this up now. All of the chain giants uh, will be awakened to bring uh, uh, upper down. Perfect. All right, I got this. Thank you. That information seals my deal. I believe. I mean, the dice will tell me. Uh, so, uh, William takes an opportunity to go to Miss B and say, um, uh, hey, just go with this next spot. Um, and then he says, um, dear boy, I listen I'm very aware that you have a job to do, and I appreciate that. And I understand that I was quite gruff with you, but listen, I'm on a timetable. I've got about an hour before the family diamond is going to be displayed. I have places to be, and you can see. And he pulls Mrs. B by the waist. I have brought a beautiful date to this. I have an audience with King Shori, and all you're doing is holding up my my problems here. You're, you're making my life much, much worse. And you're embarrassing me in front of the lady. So if you could just move out of the way so I can move along, please. Um, can, I, can I help? Because Miss B has been married to a haven, right? Mm-hmm. She's yeah. ought to have Dio's ring, right? Family <gasps> ring? Can yeah. I have that? Yes. Yeah. Of course you can have it. What kind of DM would say no? <laughs> no, if I said, no, you didn't <laughs> I keep this beautifully cool. Yeah, I would. Yeah, she's just going to like slip her hand into her pocket, pull her hand out with her uh, wedding ring back on her finger again because she hasn't been wearing it. But she William put it puts back his on. hand in his pocket, so his left hand in his pocket quickly. <laughs> <laughs> She'll put her hand on her shoulder so the family ring shows. And just kind of like wait and watch the what's guard. That family, what's that ring look like? What's it? What's it made of? Earth um, metals. If you fucking say there's a diamond it's earth metals. on it, <laughs> no, no, no. But it would be like tiny diamonds, if anything. I don't care. But I just need diamonds. Giant earth rock. <laughs> it needs a giant earth rock. No, it'd probably be like little little opals, and they kind of look like in a pattern of a cloud, and like the family seal of a uh, fancy swirls and stuff. I I love it. And so that is enough to make that guy in his menial job say these people must be important. I do not want to stop them. And so he'll he'll call over to he's like, "Hey. I need an I need an airlift." ASAP. And some guy just nods. Um, and what he does is he kind of goes uh, around a building and he brings out some... It looks like a basket with... Um, like a hot air balloon without the hot air balloon. Of course, just like the basket. Mm. Um, and he kind of waves you guys over. Cool. Um, we'll go over. Well, and so he says, Okay, get in. Um, and he does something. He attaches it like somehow to the chain. He says, Don't rock around. You'll be up in about ten minutes. Perfect. Thank you. And so he he takes like some coal, opens a, a, a port on one side. Um, there's there seems to be like a chamber underneath where you're standing, 
Uh, he throws some in there, um, and using magic kind of sets it on fire. Um, for some reason, it's not hot to your to your, your feet. It doesn't burn your feet as it's sitting under there. <clears throat> and uh, he gives it two taps, and it begins to sort of lift up. And it would lift straight up normally, but it catches on that chain and begins to take you at that angled approach up the chain. And you continue to ascend further and further up. I don't know if there's any conversation you want to have as you go up. No, not really. At least not from um, me. Yeah. Hey, Mrs. B. Hmm. Do you have a ring that's not that one? Yes. If we're going to sell this story, I should probably have one on this hand. <laughs> and he, like, shows his left hand. I, I, I do. Um, and she'll pull out another ring. Uh, it's a little simpler. Um, and she'll hand it over. Um, but do take care of that one. Understood. William very seriously puts it on and nods. Hmm. Okay, uh, and make your way to the top, and there are people there, soldiers, very similarly to to receive you. Um, and they say, uh, "Welcome to the upper. Uh, is there anything we can get for you? A drink, uh, a meal, a snack?" Yes. Um. Uh, if it's not too much trouble, you see, I have a wonderful lady here. A diamond worth a hundred gold. And they all, like, uh, they all look around and laugh, and he says, Well, that'll be up here in just an hour or two. If we had that, we wouldn't be working here. We're doing a whole, hold on, we're doing a whole ceremony on a diamond worth a hundred gold. Well, it's much bigger than that. Yeah, I know, I'm just asking if this... Okay, I get it. We're poor! Well, it's fine. <laughs> Watch the shots. <laughs> Uh, no, I will have uh, one of my favorite Zelensian drinks, though, if you'll just hook me up with that. Zelensian? Zelensian. Oh, my bad. I misheard you. Uh, and he gives you a... It's called a chain breaker. Ooh. Ooh. Um, you can like, describe it to me. Yeah, well, I, I want to play it like this. I want to say that, like, is espresso? Oh, you, wait, you get you do it. Yeah, go. No. Oh, I got it. All right, the chain breaker, mm, boy, the chain breaker. I'm I'm in. Ready? Yep. The chain breaker is a whiskey, Ooh. a scotch, mm. a bourbon. Ooh. And what passes for Red Bull? <laughs> it's a mag- I, magenta bro, I think I'm that, that, that would be ginseng root extract. Yes. All right. And uh, but it's all it's all um, one finger of each, and then this, it's it's all equal proportions. It's a it's almost like a yes. special version of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm writing this down. I'm fucking gonna make this drink. Let's do it. Another cookbook. Let's, do. Let's go. That's yeah. Drink items already in there. Um, okay, so they they bring you this, <laughs> and it is in a brass chilled cup. Oh, yes. I right, down it. Mmm. And they're impressed. That's not usually it's something you would sip on, and they're like, "Can we get you another?" Yes, that's one I will sip on. Got a good start. And and they bring it over to you. And so there there's a crowd of people who have been coming up the chains. There, you know, they're, the, the ceremony is going to take place not too far from kind of this this receiving station. Uh, the other chain is, I mean, pretty. It had to be pretty far away. As at the top, it's not because they, where they come together. You're looking at probably a mile or so. Um, and this so is a bunch of people gathering. And if you want to mingle, I don't know if there's any questions you want to ask or anything about this, but this they're all just kind of waiting because the ceremony is going to happen here. There's like a big stage set up. Um, there is like a big ribbon that's going to be cut, but then they're going to move it into the museum that's not too far away from you uh, once you get up to the top of this on the upper island. 
I want to look for an important looking lush. Go on. Thought you've. That, that's what I want. What's the lush? You know, a lush is like a, like a drunken person. That's what I thought. It's just like their face will mm. luscious and like yeah. Um, well, it's like uh, a, a lush is like is like a is a drunkard a wino. Uh, yeah, a wino. I'm somebody who's important and, and dignified looking. Mm, let me do. But is like on the drunk maybe side. maybe red of cheeks and dumb of ass. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, a jovial, almost drunk person is a lush. I see. Thank you for the new word. Look, we can we can call him Dad. That's what I call him. Dad. Yeah. I'm going through some stuff right now. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you cool. find you find um a rather portly man. He's about six three. Um human man. And his face is is flush and he's <laughs> Oh, today's gonna be a great day. I uh, you you can say that again. He, he, too, is holding a brass cup. Oh, I cheers him. Oh, cheers to you, sir. And then down mine with him. And oh, a challenge and is it? Ta- and he drinks Pop it, it on the table. <laughs> and he... Oh, oh. How long have you been here in, in Zealand? Is this your first time or, or oh, a resident? I haven't seen you around. I uh, try to get to the uppers at least uh, once every quarter or so, you know. Oh. This is your first ceremony, then. Oh, no, I'm the curator for the Loas. This is sort of... Oh, great, and... Oh, that's this is an excellent happenstance. Yeah! I, I was actually looking for you. Oh, oh, sorry, I've... I... You are? Oh, my... Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, my occupational title is Raven. I don't know if you've heard of me, but... Yeah, Essentially, I, I'm an I'm a security consultant, mm. um, and I was looking over the plans. He's kind of uh, drifting and France. looking at Ms. no, no. B. Hey, listen. Yo. Yeah, she's that's that's first of all that's my wife. Don't don't look at it oh, that way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Forgive yeah, me. Your, your beauty I will, is listen, worth no curator. Oh, we will. We, <laughs> don't you worry. We we will party. But let's business first, party second. Don't business you worry. Business party first. <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfect. So, real quick, just while I have you, the, there's an issue with the transfer into the museum. Hmm. Um, what do you yes, mean? Yes, I, I, yeah. Well, I'm concerned. I, I heard some soldiers talking about uh, essentially scribbling out on on their the, uh, transfer duty. The guard leaving their post. Yes, when the ones who are, will be escorting the the diamond from which uh, which family di- which chain. I believe it was the the southwest chain, but from the from the lower to the upper museum, right? You know, it comes up, they display it, and then they transfer it to the upper museum. It's once they transfer it to the upper museum, they were planning to knock off and have a couple chain breakers. I heard they said, "Oh, nothing what? ever happens. Nothing to be worried about." Um, so I was I was hoping to get a few guys and just double up that. Um, so if you can just point me to where what? they're going to be exiting from the display. I can go ahead and get that set up for you. So you, uh, what, what is your name again? I'm the Raven. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal around here. I'm a security consultant, and he kind of like strains his tie. Did, did I hire you? No, the Upper Museum hired me. Oh. Uh, it's, it's not that they don't trust you. It's frankly that they have way too much money. Yeah, Francis never does trust me. It pisses me off. <laughs> Well, it really, he spends a lot of money in order to never have to do a damn thing. I'll and have say, to take his coin. I'll say. What? So you're going to help move the diamond from the transfer to the upper museum? Uh, well, from the from the display stage, you know, we have the party. And then when they move it to the upper museum, that's I'm going to help with that. I've got a small crew. We're going to double up the patrol damn and essentially more. keep the upper museum guards... Where they need to be. Now we'll they're, they're say not yes. Knock off and have a party for fun. You're right. Okay. Great. Um. 
If you could just point me to where the from the stage to the upper museum, the routes we're going to take. He kind of he kind of he pulls a uh, like a just patting himself down. He pulls out this card. He says, "Here's the access card for the downstairs." And it, but as you go to Perfect. reach, I need you to roll a deception for claiming to be this person, and you can do it with um, advantage because he is drunk as a skunk. Perfect. I will be doing that then. <laughs> Um, let me sh- 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 I'm just gonna mess that Alright, three still Do 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 Alright, well, that's a pretty good one Uh, mm-hmm. 25 It's pretty good, he goes So as he, as you as you go to take it, he kind of pulls it back And he looks at it and he's like Yeah, that's the right one, sorry And he, and he hands Perfect. you the card but- uh, I pocket it and then I order us two more chain breakers. Oh, you're too kind, Raven. Uh, so I'm uh, happy to do it. And so uh, he takes that as soon as he clink it again, or he's he's yep. got his cup out. Clink it. <laughs> yep. And he kind of yeah. dribbles it, and he's like, "Well, be careful. Good luck with the gods." Uh, of course, of course. Uh, William, uh, telepathic to Miss B, and says. Mm-hmm. That was uh, really lucky. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she'll kind of want to like steer him towards the museum just to see where the empty points are. Okay. So in so you guys want to look at the museum or go back down to the lower? I want to go towards the stage because my understanding is this comes up from the lower. There's a ceremony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we transfer it to the upper. From, yes, so I yep. want to go like. I want to go on near the stage and start examining the from the stage to the upper museum pathway. Okay, um, so the kind of, kind of almost the path you guys took when you were from the chain area where it comes up and connects and the car dropped you. It's a um, hundred yards straight shot to this stage with um, kind of the banner uh, around the perimeter of that same thing, where they're going to come up the stairs from the side place it like on a pedestal this diamond then they're mm-hmm. gonna like mm-hmm. uncase it do the ceremony cut the ribbon and then recase and send to the upper into the actual museum what did you say the curator's name was uh I didn't he never said he didn't yeah okay great Let's talk about the City of Ghosts podcast. I've gobbled up episode one, and let me tell you, the quality of production, voice acting, and storyline are just simply amazing in this supernatural neo-noir drama set in the 1990s. It takes place in New York City, so it's got corruption, it's got murder, it's got all the things that haunt us. We follow the sardonic, dry, and gruff Eleanor L. Rifkin, who makes a living as an information broker, digging up dirt on high-level individuals but it's forced into a gripping new case of the supernatural kind. Here's a short trailer for you to sink your teeth into. It's 1999, New York City. Where am I? Who are you? Oh, shut up! Bridget Lundy Payne stars in a new supernatural neo-noir audio drama. The voices, they're back. City of Ghosts. I understand this is beyond your usual scope. So two deaths and an attempted third. Must mean we're on to something big. Men like them have fortresses built around them. What good does sticking your neck out do, especially in this city? Still, just be careful. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Do be well, Eleanor. Ooh, so creepy. Love it. City of Ghosts, coming to you October 5th, wherever you get your podcasts. And now, back to the show. Um, I, I say you, you've waited a little while, maybe you've mingled with some other people. Um, sure. Let's do. Let, wait, is wait, there wait. music? Is yeah, there music and yeah, dancing? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big time. I mean, there's drinks, there's food. Then, all right, I get it. I, I say, uh, Miss B, the be- the perfect and easiest way to case this joint without looking suspicious is we dance while we wait and while we observe. Of course. 
And so he offers his hand. And so we dance to get scope out the fucking place. It's just the fucking image of music and dancing while we're planning this heist. Yeah. That's where we're going to it. Um, while we're scoping it out, I think Miss B would look like she's actually having a little bit of fun. Because this is. She likes to dance. This is fun. <laughs> Are we. To have a good time, Lucian just had to die. Yeah. That's fine. Look, we're so much Mom better. Mom and Dad are getting along. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we were happy until we had the kid. Death is babysitting. <laughs> um, yeah, and you guys dance around. I'm going to give you a bonus on any of these future roles because the, of you like actually scoping it out. What you'll gather is you see strategically placed are some other guards. Uh, it's almost like people shouldn't be leaving from this area until the ceremony's over. So they've kind of got them on a larger perimeter in this grassy area. Uh, before you would get into sort of the this, the city proper with the businesses. And there's even like a wall um, you would have to go through anyways, another checkpoint. This is just kind of reception area for the upper. Um, and while you're dancing, it's... Let me do a quick wall. You've got a couple other people who, who got out to dance, but no one of, of import is, is out there dancing as well. Um, yeah, and so, you know, about an hour passes... Um, people are, it's been a really good time. And then you hear the trumpets. And you know that that's kind of the ceremonial call for the diamond to come up. It, and it's a prestigious event for things to make it from the lower museum to the upper. Um, it's a big deal. And so a, a guard, uh, crew of four individuals, um, ride this thing up and they set it down. And very ceremoniously pick it up again uh, and begin to make the transfer over from where the basket lands on the upper over toward the stage. How big is this diamond? How shiny is this diamond? I want to know the details. Diamond has to be held in almost like it's like a football sized diamond. Jeez. Um, and so they are bringing this encased diamond and they've made their way up onto the stage and they're placing it and they are uh, one of them the three back away and one takes the glass case off um, and and then he sets it to the side and steps back and then the curator for the uppers then appears and he's like a greasy looking dude with a pencil thin mustache Um, he has a bald head it is a shiny bald head Uh, he's wearing like a a pink suit um, with long coattails, and he says, "Welcome, everyone, to the the second annual transfer of lower to upper goods and services. We are claiming for ourselves the one and only, and it's almost like he forgot the name. And he kind of looks back to it. Uh, the Haven Family Diamond. It is a is a privilege to have the Haven family become a part of the Uppers family." Um, well, did anyone like to say anything? Um, and then you see, um, a pretty nondescript man step out, and he has on a similar ring, uh, to Miss B. Uh, and he steps up, and he says, um, this, this diamond has been in my family for, uh, many, many centuries, uh, dating back as far as our family tree goes. And we're proud to be able to build a partnership from the lower museum to the upper museum uh, and, and increase our own uh, prestige within the community and, and hope to continue to do that with many of the artifacts that we've been able to find uh, for my family of adventures for so many generations. And people uh, clap and cheer to that. And he does a little bow and steps down. And so then the upper curator kind of waves over someone and you know it to be the lower curator and he stumbles uh, kind of onto the stage and he has these giant scissors he pulls from his back and the upper curator says and now we'll do the ceremonial ribbon cutting and so he and a couple other people who probably are important step up they all put their hand on the scissors and they cut at the same time everyone cheers uh, and there's a lot of the music begins playing once again and then the four guards are motioned in. So this time they, they set it there, 
And as they begin to walk off stage, people are, are watching them. Um, and I don't know if this is the time that you want to move in for assistance. Uh, what I would like to do, uh, no, I would like to uh, exit and then go around the side and meet them outside. Okay. Because what I would say yeah, is, because I don't want, I don't want to have this conversation in front of everybody. I want them to exit and then me- us meet them outside. Okay, perfect. So you are attempting to leave the perimeter and a guard stops you and he says, oh, excuse me, sir, you can't go beyond the perimeter until the ceremony is completed. And so I very quickly and say, say, listen, my name is the Raven. I don't have time for this. I'm an outside security consultant. I flash the security card that I have. He takes it. I, I have this. And he, Obviously, I need this. Go ahead. He takes a card and he has like he pulls out this like uh, device. And he scans it, and it checks green, and he says, Ah, oh, sorry about the inconvenience. Thank you, I appreciate it. And then I pull Miss B along. She, of course, follows. Uh, and so the cheering has died down, music's still playing, and you hear the shuffle of feet um, and some grumbles as uh, these four guards bring this around the backside to you. Um, and, and they're like, What are you guys doing here? Oh, uh, we're here to take over leave. Um, you, Francis, as it were, said he wanted to reward you. He hired us outside consultants. And then I flash the security badge if they want to check it. Um, we're going to take it the rest of the way. You guys get to enjoy the party. Can you roll a deception check? Uh, and again, because you use name dropping, you have a card that's legit. Uh, roll with advantage on that one. I would love to. Boom. Okay, that's not the best. Let's try again. Uh, not better. 14. Um, you know, these guys are simple guards, and they say, well, you know, Francis will be here soon anyways. Um, can I see that card one more time? Yeah, absolutely. And he hands it to her. Uh, and then Miss B will, like, put her hand out with the... Haven family ring. I feel like I we just wanted to make sure uh, to get it there safely as well. Oh, oh, please, please forgive me. She gives he gives a card back. Doesn't really look at it after that. Gives a card back to you and says, "Well, I guess we're off for the the day then." Oh yeah, one more thing. And uh, William hands this guard his chain breaker. Have fun. And then he takes the diamond from them. <laughs> Thanks. We. Uh, be, be careful with that. We don't want to lose our jobs. Oh, double hands. Yeah, see, he's super got it in a like a baby hold, like oh, secure. Oh, I would trust him with my life. And so they they like all like this is this is awesome. It's awesome. I imagine army privates. They just think it's the best that they have alcohol. <laughs> they are off shift, and so they're like great, great. And they and they then they leave and go around the corner, and you hear Francis. So if you can imagine a building, you're at the back of the building. And you hear him saying, if we can just get the item put in, we can call it a day and enjoy the revelries. And so he's coming down. As you peek over, you see him coming down the walkway with um, that large burly man that you spoke with earlier. Um, she'll look to William. It's like, let's put it in my pocket and skedaddle. <laughs> magic pocket? You're- she has a pocket of holding magic magic pockets. Yeah, magic pocket, right? Yeah. It fits this thing. It should. Okay, yeah. Does that? Does, I'm just asking. It's, I can't it's remember. The dress, it's the dress of thinks it has yes. pockets, I believe. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Pops it in, pops it in her pocket, arm around her waist. We start walking the opposite direction to oh, like move. I, I thought you would just cross path and just kind of rub it. Just Oh, just, I, I'm down with that if it makes sense. Whatever you guys want to do. Now nah, fuck it. Let's let's be. We've already made it this far. If I have to murder these two in a hallway, hey, I will. Well, what you want to do? I have a better suggestion that just seems like a lot more fun rather than crossing paths. Is there like a little cute alleyway or something? Yeah. So you kind of went down an alleyway, right? Um, it was a kind of a grassier area, though. It's not like like I said, city proper yet. So there's kind of buildings, outcroppings, um, and this was between two buildings that you guys had walked behind. And so they're coming down between the two buildings as well. Let, let me make it awkward. William and I, let's go into the alley. She'll just drag, like, trust me on this husband of mine. Sure. Uh, she'll pin him against the wall and pretend he's to kiss him. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, excuse me, man. We'll go. We'll just go the opposite way. Reginald, please. He's like, oh, well, look at you, mate. Get the good. I wish my wife loved me. <laughs> And they turn and walk away the opposite direction to go around. And there's no one else in the alley with you. Good thinking, Miss B. You're welcome. Sorry for the awkward. Let's go. <laughs> no, not awkward. I, again, I think it's a you guys thing. I, think I don't think fucking's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, though. And he hurries her along. Like, let's yeah. get the fuck yeah, out of here. <laughs> Full blown <laughs> speed walking. I think that the the cover of night is this. You guys have been. It's been a long day. The it is beginning to uh, sun's beginning to set. Um, you can see some of the moons coming out just barely, and you're able to make your way back down the chain. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm laughing at the chat. Yeah, uh, this Lucian's this rolling in his grave. I have not been I buried. Been buried. <laughs> um, and you, you're able to make it out. I mean, just hours before. Uh, the 25-hour mark back over to Gordy's teleport shop. It's not a teleport shop. It's just where he does it. Um, and you... Uh, it, it is important that we understand that, like, as we're, like, bolting, William at some point has, like, as we're going by trays, he's grabbing chain breakers and getting a few <laughs> in, in on the way out. So by the time no, he lands teleported, he is, like... Toast to the motherfucker. <laughs> I feel like the Chainbreaker might be the new favorite drink of William. He's really grown. Yeah. It's his home thing. Blackberry brandy is 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 I think still mm-hmm. in his heart. It's still in his heart, but this is also his home. Local favorite. Yeah. yeah. In Rome. When in Rome. Well, I remember this is where he comes from. I I yeah. feel like this is that's a classic. Yeah. It's like his hometown drink. Yep. yep. But he lands um, in that teleporter. Smash. Teleport back in. Uh, and you make your way back, of course, immediately back to absolutely the um, hey, elders, elders chapel in there. Mm-hmm. And yes, Shane. Just real quick, I know we're on time crunch. I just wanted to point out that um, you already established a magical transportation service called Uber Magical. It's and true. For some reason, knowing that you still decided to make Gertie's teleport shop. He literally could just be in charge Support of local Uber businesses, bro. <laughs> I'm not always going to outsource that Uber, Uber Magical. Magical is owned by Ginger Street Corporation, yeah. and it's just an umbrella company. <laughs> we all know. Yeah. We all we all know the un, the unjust mega corporation Ginger Street. It, it's Limited really is. the alliance of yes. this world. I mean, it's it's basically Walmart, right? Uh, yeah, Target. You know, I mean, it's, no, it's basically I'm not like low, low grade. <laughs> no, it's like it's like Tesla. I don't know. Mm. Walmart's like, got a lot like more Elon money Musk than Target in does. Charge. Target's so like, nice. And they, they're like, look at SpaceX, but instead of SpaceX, it's just like, look here at Magic X. It's our new magic program. Arcane We're X. We're crossing all kinds Arcane of barriers. X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arcane X. For sure. Arcane. I like it. <laughs> Geek on Musk. Anyway. Gingerlon. Anyway. Gingerlon. That's so You make your way back to the, <laughs> the elders' uh, building. Mm-hmm. They're... They're kind of just drinking tea around his body at, at in this building. Yes. Hell yeah. William. When we land in a teleporter, William sobers up as much as possible, pulls the ring off, hands it back to Miss B so he doesn't fuck it up. Good call. I was going to make you check that way. <laughs> hey, you got that ring on you? Let's do it. Well, I was afraid of using a fire spell without taking it off. Mm. She'll, <laughs> she'll take it and thank him. I'm going to die for five minutes. You're going to be wearing that ring, kissing Miss B out in the alley, wearing my ring. Is that how you're going to do me? I'm dead for five minutes. For f- she'll, she'll hold the ring to her heart for a moment and was like, this one was Neo's. And then put it in her pocket again. Oh, mm. shit. Oh, fuck. I thought nope. it was the B ring. I'm hooked up. <laughs> no, no, no. It was Neo's. That's why he was like so serious about it. Oh, no. Dang. That's even crazier. Uh, and you, when you get in there, there there seems to be another individual who is kind of watching over uh, Lucian's body. Um, Marguerite and Lafayette are, are again drinking at the table they were earlier, and William sits busted. and gets a drink with them. Oh, oh just very like just slides in and pours himself one. Oh well, well, well yeah. welcome, welcome back, William," says uh, Brother Lafayette. Do you make him a lich? 
When are you, I said I wouldn't, and I have not, and nor will I. Good, you're not a liar. We brought the diamond, Mrs. B. Show him. <laughs> Sister, you he have puts it. his feet up on oh, the yeah, table. She'll, she'll take out the diamond from her pocket of. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that a baby? <laughs> Or a diamond. I didn't touch her. I, um, oh, it's fine. <laughs> is there is there any chance in the world that after consuming a SpaceX aircraft's worth of fuel in alcohol form, <laughs> is there any chance at all that William belts his face? <laughs> 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 He's drinking morning burps. He's just like, I didn't fucking touch her. <laughs> Can you do? Can you do a belch flames roll for me? <laughs> uh, it's like a one to twelve. It, yeah, it's a, yeah. What is, no, what no, is, I, I cast nothing see if you do. but dragon's breath in camp anyone. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Uh, you hand the diamond over to this uh, this individual. Um, they're kind of hunched, elderly. Is it's a human human male, uh, very scraggly hair, long. It kind of covers his face. Uh, and he and he takes it kind of shaking from you and he says it will take me our day to, to finish this but you'll have your friend back on the morrow it'd sure be cooler if you could do it like in an hour I'm not gonna promise that but listen you go get rest get you some meal you know what if you go talk to uh, sleep it off get some coffee maybe uh, you uh, fucking uh, lush I will take care of you I'm certain. Marguerite, what are you doing for the next 24 hours? Uh, you know, just managing the city, I suppose. I've got a better idea. And with that, we will uh, drop over to... Wonderful cut. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, oh, this episode's I'm, I'm going a little here. bit longer. No. But that's what- There's no secret reveal, because I'm just here. <laughs> I was here the whole time. You've just filled your belly with food and drink, and you stumble slightly, not slosh, out of a tavern onto a stone path. The hustle and bustle fill the air on a chilly night. Smell of piss and beer fills your senses. But as you get further from this tavern, (laughs) the smell (laughs) sweetens a bit. The smell of folded caramel hits you. You wrap a scarf around your neck as you make your way, presumably... Back to the temple where you live. And this is one of your favorite weekend routines. Of course, after you've attended the orphanages and the kids have gone to bed. You, f- you get to forget about everything and just be you. People watch, eat what you want, with no guilt about duties or responsibilities. It's almost like it centers you. You said duty. And you bump into a stranger in a crowd. It checks you kind of hard. Can you roll a perception check for me, please? <sighs> I don't know if it'll let me when I'm dead. Let's find out. This is a dream state. You can do anything. My No, my character sheet, it says dead Lucian Oh, it Bright. literally I won't let I don't roll. know if it will let me press the perception button. Let's find out. Yeah, it doesn't give a fuck. You can perceive when you're dead. I rolled a natural one. That's what happens when you're dead. Mm, okay. Uh, See, so you are maybe perturbed, um, but you carry on for a little while. And it happens again. You get bumped again. Opposite side. Can you roll another perception check for me? Sure. A 16. Um, you were able at this time to feel that something was, was taken from you. Presumably your wallet. Mm. Your money. Um, but as you check, you realize Coin that some, purse. something else was taken as well. Do you? What else do you, does Lucian often wear on him at all times? Like, What's, what's his typical get-up? Like another item he would have. Like a, a chain, like a a bracelet or anything like that. The only piece of jewelry that Lucian owns is a small platinum ring with 50 GP shaped like a beehive. Um, so that one you have on, you notice two. Oh, you no, no, no. Lucian has a, um, a character development on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Lucian has a gold plated Zippo lighter and it's embossed with the uh, cock ring the gold plated cock ring they stole it from uh, I don't know how <laughs> no uh, he has a gold well it's a little bit big for him frankly it used to be breezes um, he <laughs> has a gold 
plated flip lighter. Uh, it's embossed with the symbol of no, it's secretly been his holy symbol this whole time. It's been a <laughs> I just want to stop for a second. Hard yeah. stop. And imagine the ceremony <laughs> after you finish 30 <laughs> days of kung fu practice. The ceremony you go through with Breeze to give you this item. Anyway. This, this magical item requires $69 tier. You'll have to... <laughs> you, have to <laughs> you have to attune to it. Oh, no! <laughs> no! Oh, boy. Um, but you you notice that your Zippo <clears throat> lighter and your coin purse have disappeared. You see the individual uh, run just up ahead and take the corner into an alley. Well, here's the problem with that. I'm fast as fuck, boy. And so I'm just going to step with the wind. Just 80 feet of movement in a split second. Like, what's up? And, yeah, and you turn the corner, I mean, within arm's reach. And as you turn the corner, empty. There's nothing in the alley. And then you see a figure that seems to jump over the wall about 50... Uh, Meters? Yards? I don't need to speak. Uh, do you want to know one that's further than my sprinting distance? No, um, I'm just trying to make... <laughs> don't. You know, you can... It's, it'll, we'll, say, uh, we'll say 50 meters away. 50, we'll say 50 okay. yards. Half football field away. You see a figure sure. jump the wall. It's very far away. I mean, I, I got, do I keep chasing him? I don't know. Like, that's very far away. Yeah, so you, you kinda... chase, uh, but as you get there, the wall seems it seems to have grown the closer you've gotten. It, it seems almost <laughs> ridiculously tall for someone to be able to jump that. <clears throat> and you hear someone say behind you, Lucian? Mr. Lucian? And you turn around to see none other than Tasha and all her ruined teeth. And she's sitting on a the cardboard box. The clothes she's wearing are tattered and she looks malnourished. No, Tosh. What? What are you doing here? Why, well, I, I never thought I'd see you again. Uh... They, they shut down the orphanage, and so we've had to figure out our own way. Who, who shut down the orphanage? Who did, what? Uh, we just... Someone bought it, and they didn't care what we did. The, 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 the mothers there tried to take care of it as long as they could, but they can only support so many kids, and so some of us struck out. And, and she, she, hand, she, she hands you back the coin purse. She's like, ah, sorry, I didn't realize this was was yours. No, you keep it. Um, I... And th- this is directly contrary to, like, Lucian's backstory, right? Like, right. he yes. went into the KNG to stop this from happening? Yes. Uh, I don't understand. I... They were supposed to, you're supposed to be fine. You're supposed to be okay. I... I'm so sorry. I... I... <laughs> no, it's... It's fine. I... You know, you used to tell me that sometimes things are hard and... You know, we're made tougher by the tough times and... I'd like to... <laughs> <laughs> think that uh, I'm tougher every day because of it. Yeah. Tougher than you should be. And then the scene kind of freezes. And Kinos comes in. And he says, uh, So you know this girl? <laughs> of course I know that. It's just. It's weird seeing you around people that you, like, love. Love. Why are you showing me this, Keen? Can you know why you? She's not real, is she? She's real. She's she's in your mind and in your heart. She's as real as anything else. This girl is 
if I had not shown you her and I said someone who's a thief, um, someone who steals from people all the time, who has on happenstance killed other people to, to get what they want, even if it's for survival, what would you have said? Bad person? Good person? I would mourn whatever circumstances led child of the gods down that path. It is unfortunate. But you can tell the girl is, is sick. I doubt she has much longer to, to provide anything of, of worth to this world. Or maybe she lives. Maybe she becomes an upstanding citizen. Yes, I... Kush is real tired. <laughs> He's like rubs his brow. Best case scenario. This girl died what five hundred and fifty years ago. If she if she lived a long life, yeah, kind of shrugs. Hmm. It's are you trying to te- te- teach me something? Are you trying to show me something? What is it? You can just come out and say it. I don't understand the game. A very similar inky, starry hand that's much more menacing than yours reaches out to just below her neck and says, Will you pay for the cost of resurrection? Will you just let her come home to me in the darkness? I'm afraid I don't understand the question. If I take her life... Well, I can theoretically restore yours, but there's a balance. What I'm saying is, this girl who's a thief who has no worth in the world is just one life for another. Would that make you happy? Because it wouldn't make me happy. Wouldn't make her happy. It would make things balanced. And that is what makes me happy. I don't... We'd be taking some bad out of the world and putting good into the world. That's not... how people work, you know? I don't know if you've talked to many of us, but you can't call one person bad and one person good and and say that one life is worth more or less than another. It's just people. And we're made up out of a lot of good and a lot of bad and a lot of stuff that you can't even put on an alignment chart, (laughs) you know? I mean, it's just the way of the world. Mm -hmm. So whatever balance you're talking about, I don't think it's real. How'd you say that? My father would certainly disagree. Yeah. Mine too. But I find that I I thrive in the times when it's it's not balanced. Honestly, it works in my favor. But there is balance. So the hand retracts to a normal arm and he says, If you're ready, I, I think it's time. I I didn't learn anything. What was I supposed to? You... I would dare say that you did? Or that I learned something about you? Your worth in the world, Lucian, is more perhaps than you could have ever thought. Perhaps you think that you as Lucian is just doing something good for the sake of being good, but people need people like you in the world who will will say, hey, I'm not going to sacrifice anybody. Like in the lifeboat. People like you who say, well, I may have to do something extreme, but I'm willing to make up for it. I'm willing to do what it takes to correct that wrong. In the case of our necromancer. And in the case of 
this young girl who you love, and perhaps I made it too easy on you, but you don't think of people as pluses and minuses. They're in individual souls worth saving, worth fighting for. And Lucian, I, I don't know if you learned anything or not, but you're shining light in a darkened place. And that's why I think you need to go back. But you have to take the step. What should I do different this time? I mean, I... Oh, that's easy. Don't die. Well... A little reductive. Okay. Oh, by the way, um... You've sort of unlocked all the potential I can give you, because the ultimate power that I have is in death, and you've done that, and your friends are about to help you, and so you may find yourself a little little stronger when you get back. Just learn to use those arms. Things will fall into place. Okay. Any questions? Uh, oh, also, no. Nova's the bad guy, so I'll see you out there. Okay, bye. Wait, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> so my power's been coming from you this whole time. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Why the, why the charade? Your father is an evil man. He's, I mean, it's my dad. But okay. He's an evil. My, my dad's a good man. He's like super dead too, right? Isn't he? Like six hundred years ago. You know, I, I haven't had to. I've I've been with you for so long. I don't even know. I I've been trapped in here, but now you things are about to get shaken up. I'm released. You're more powerful. Oh, I'm gonna be keeping tabs on you. But I've been constrained to you for your entire life. While you were down for six hundred years, guess who else was down for six hundred years? I see. So we've got some things to learn and change and do. I'll be in touch as soon as I gather some intel. Probably gonna need to hide from my sister. I think that's why I came to you in the first place as a baby. A little murky. That's one word for it. All right, well make me real strong so I can do some stuff and not die again. I didn't have to do anything. You are already everything. Okay. I'll see you out there, kid. All right. Um, and he like touches your nose, boop, and you are like feel like you hit by a Mack truck. And it's it has been the next day, and Lucian, you uh, open your eyes to the sun beaming through on your face to this uh, in this elders building. Uh, it's like you're you're wrapped up in it, um, comforted by this warmth, um, and. You open your eyes, and standing above you is Will and Miss B. Lucian is dressed in this, like, super fancy getup that Will bought for him back in town. I think he's going to just, like, absentmindedly reach up and take off his necktie. That thing was killing me. Welcome home, buddy. Told you we'd be here. And that's where we're in the episode. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to this uh, longer episode. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. Uh, I hope it did a good job. Hope you enjoyed it. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm Devin Davenport. Uh, and then, so I'm going to pass it over to my, my cohorts, my, my co-podcasters for all the things we talk about. Uh, hey, so... Um, if you want to support the show, you can go to store.lovestoop.org uh, and you can get the brand new sticker that I'm going to make uh, Avon make. Mm-hmm. And it's just in <laughs> Avon's font with a smiley face of William's character head. And it just says, Will hyphen N I N hyphen law. And it's just got, <laughs> it's just got <laughs> William just cry laughing on it. <laughs> So just will and law. Will and law. Cry laughing. <laughs> yep. 
uh, I already get my new sticker that I'm going to make Avon make that is just a cute little chibi Lucian. And he's, uh, he's, he's wearing the suit and he's like gesturing with his political hand. And he goes, um, modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> oh, oh boy. My sticker. <laughs> If you don't know, later on, later on, come on, let's go. Uh, my sticker is going to be of a frozen Neko statue. <laughs> and, and, oh, do you want to build a snowman? But no, but no, the arm is wait, broken. Wait, wait, wait. And 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 uh, Will says, "Chip off the old block." <laughs> no, I got you one better. It's Neko's character frozen, but it's like cartoony, and then there's like a pop in it, like a like a popsicle, popsicle stick. stick in it. Ah. Uh. Yep. <laughs> Neko is currently. I, I feel like, that, does not like, like, that. like like a like a Kinos holding a Neko popsicle about to chow down. Oh great! Yeah, oh, no. that's good too. <laughs> oh yeah, roll uh, for humanity is the honor group. They're like super important. They can work work through your trauma uh, in game, like I've done today with Devin. Um, it's important to do therapy, or else you'll be fucked up and emotionally stupid. So uh, we're gonna give them. Fuck that rolls forever. Seventeen dollars. Dang, it dude! Was like a, it did a little dance. It, did, it mesmerized me that die. Uh, and it was They're rich now, bro. D and D beyond. Yeah, I got seventeen dollars. I can basically do anything. GG depression in general wow. for everybody. Well, uh, you should come tell us those rolls that you get for your rolls of humanity in our Discord. So go to discord.lawfulstupid.org. Uh, and join us in the chat. It'll be great to see you. Uh, or you can also send sticker suggestions, and I'll see what from the list inspires me. So, I, I will take any suggestions. The boys always throw them at me, but uh, I don't mind patrons and. Uh, I hand lawful. them to you, but that's fine. <laughs> I don't. I alley them for you to oop. Yep. Yeah. See, team players, right there. Oop. <laughs> Opa. Alley oop. I love it. That's, 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 what you, that's what you call it when you when you bump into a stranger in an alley. <laughs> alley, <whoop. laughs> butt in the Midwest. Uh, okay, good news story. You're a butt in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a uh, couple sends books to inmates to show them they are not forgotten. Couple sends books to inmates to show they're not forgotten. Come on, Avon, let's do this thing. No, my brain's broken. My boy's back. I don't really care about the end. <laughs> There's a sweet boy here now. Yeah. All right. So I don't got it. Send, it, send it to the boys. All right, cool. And what they don't tell you is that it's really just a slap in the face because one of the books that they constantly send is America, the Brave, the Land of the Free. And it's just a book about freedoms and all the stuff you enjoy about America. And the other one is How to Break Out of Jail for Dummies. Oh, it's exclusively yeah. <laughs> those two books that they send to inmates. Uh, like they send enough that everybody gets one. So it's like one that's shitty, and then the other one's like How to Break Out of Prison for Dummies. And the guards never read it because, well, they don't get paid enough. So I was going to say. And half of them are on the take anyway, so it's fine. How not to be a prisoner for dummies. Did you be, yeah, come. I was going to <laughs> They come packed in the boxes where the dummies one is underneath the other one. We yeah, and nobody's checking. Problem. Yeah, no one's checking. Yeah, no like I spy books. Maybe like educational. I like, I, I like how Dwayne's really showing how much of a sheeple he is right now with his with his cockamamie explanation. <laughs> we all know the truth. <laughs> I like this uh-huh. now. I can turn it on Dwayne and be like, no, Dwayne's wrong. <laughs> this is Good. What's really going down. Uh, they only send two books. Uh, they sing the King James version of the Bible and Mind Comp. And one of those books, <laughs> if you, if you read it too much and obsess about it, it'll turn you into a monster. No one knows which one. <laughs> Why can't it be both, though, Shane? I'm not here to name names. I'm just saying that one of it's them. Definitely my Really, if you get really into it, it'll make you a monster. Spiritual monster. It's a good monster. <laughs> De- Devin, you were you're pretty pretty vocal and that it's it's mind cough. You wanna talk it's about mind that? Comp. Um No, uh no uh You've been doing some reading lately? Not, a hey, lot. 
Hey. <laughs> that was that was off color. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, team. Sorry, world. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to get, sorry to get political. <laughs> on main. Sorry, behind a group. We'll be sending Shane over soon. Uh, hey, everybody. As we always say, you know it. It's true. We love we you. We love you. We love you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.